folks, we're on Lake Winnipesaukee today in search of some giant white perch. Hopefully we're going to get into some really good numbers. I'm here with Chuck Fritz and my friend Rick Como here. And we're going to go through some of the techniques we use. And hopefully we can get into an all-out blitz on some of these white perch. Stay tuned. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. I fished this spot, as soon as I dropped my jig down the hole, the screen lit up, the red line started stacking up like dominoes, it was pretty intense. I'm hoping that's what's going to happen again. Starting off with the, with the uh, Silver Tiger Flam Blade Spoon, I've trimmed the trebles down so there's only one point so I can put bait on it because in New Hampshire you're only allowed one single hook with a single hook point with bait. And just going to use enough piece of dilly to cover that hook so that we can hide that hook from the, from the fish and provide a little bit of scent meat for him to eat. Let's see what happens. There we go. Didn't take long. That's what we're hoping for. Hopefully that's going to trigger a response from the rest of the school that might be around to feed. It's a good size one. That's what we came for right there. A nice Lake Winnipesaukee white perch. That's the average size of the white perch that we catch on Lake Winnipesaukee. So if that's average, what's big? <laughs> that's what we're going to show you today. Saki white perch. This one's probably pushing two pounds. No, nope, he's just full of piss and vinegar. About the same size as the last one. When these fish bite, they bite really light. Not, it's very seldom a, a feel. You're watching the tip of your rod. We usually just bounce it and then watch that tip. Hold it still and let them. Well, they want that spoon, don't they? Really, uh, you just gotta develop your feel for it. Once you develop your feel, you'll be on fire. These fish are all running about the same size right now. Yeah, Rick's on. This is your first white perch. First white perch. First white perch. Awesome. Good deal. Good photo of Rick with his first white perch. You notice we have very, very little equipment on the ice. We, we didn't take a bunch of stuff out and set up a bunch of gear all over the place because we might want to move. You know the. We were doing pretty well here. We got, I don't know, half a dozen fish or so, and now there's nothing on the screen. So we're gonna give this 15 or 20 minutes. Then we're gonna move. We're gonna go to another basin. There's a bunch of them around here, and we're gonna try that. It's not to say we won't come back here, but we're gonna move, and we're gonna move as much as necessary. When I get to a spot, I never know how long I'm gonna be there. I could be there for three hours catching fish. I could be there for 20 minutes and not mark a single fish. I wanna be able to move 
as soon as I decide I want to move. I don't want to start thinking about moving. Oh, I'm going to have to move here pretty soon. I should start thinking about moving. I want to move as soon as I can move. So we've got the Vexilar, some worms, and our rods to put in the sled, off to the next spot, drill a few more holes, try it again. So mobility is going to be the key to staying on fish all day long today. Hooked it up. One there. Nice one. Another one. You gonna keep a few for supper tonight? We're gonna keep a couple for uh, for dinner. I don't yeah, think that's should. gonna be an issue today. No, no. They're excellent tables from there. One of the good things about the white perch is they're very prolific breeders, very successful, which is why some states consider them invasive because once you get them into a water body, it's almost impossible to get them out without killing off the entire water body. Very, very successful fish. So, you know, we have a 25 fish limit in New Hampshire. It doesn't mean you have to keep 25 fish every time you go. There are times, some years, when I don't keep any fish, so I might keep a 25 fish limit one time that whole year. So this is a spot that we already knew about because we fished this a couple weeks ago and did really well here. But basically what we're doing, if we hadn't fished here before and how we found this place was we were fishing basins adjacent, oh, adjacent to steep break lines. See how close we are to shore there's this 30 foot ball right underneath us. Oh, this, this. And we'll just identify a bunch of basins. There happen to be a lot of them in this area. So we can hop from basin to basin to basin until we find schools of fish. And there were no fish on the screen just then. So what I did was I dropped my jig to the bottom and pounded it on the bottom a couple times. Just jig it up and let it fall and hit the bottom again. It stirs up silt and that'll draw fish in. They think it's food coming out of the silk. And then you trigger, trigger them to bite. Yeah. Nice one. That's bigger than some states, state record right there. This is our average in Winnipesaukee. We have a very unique and special fishery here. So we've been moving around, bouncing from basin to basin. This is what our third, fourth spot. And we got into a nice, nice school of really big fish. Oh yeah. Big, big fish. All big fish. We're on the blade spoon. We just switched Rick over to the blade spoon and he's got fish coming up 10 feet to meet his jig. This could get tricky. They swim in large circles, so. Oh, I lost that one right at the hole. That was a nice fish. And they're seeing this jig come down. I'm just putting it right above the, at the top of the school. And letting them come up to it. And they're just bouncing it lightly chance to bite. Just watching that rod tip. With this meat stick, this that tip is so fine that you don't feel the bites on this rod. You see them. eaters this is probably a really good size to eat
pretty sure that's a good fish that's at my jig right now. There he is. So, the weather is going to play a really important part in your success white perch fishing. Maybe, yeah. The weather's going to play a really important part. When we first got here, that's a nice one, we were on, on some pretty active fish and the cloud cover we had went away and there was bright blue sky. And there's some weather forecasted, some snow coming in this afternoon. And those clouds are just now starting to roll in. You can tell there's a front coming in. And all of a sudden we're back on active fish again. Just a matter of timing. There's a huge, this is a good one. I'm in your line. I don't think so. Either that or you're on bottom. I'm yeah. pretty sure I'm in your line though. Yeah, just, yeah. Just let, oh, don't, don't, open your bail. This is a good fish. Yeah, you got my line. Yeah. All right. That's what we come to Lake Winnipesaukee for right there. That's a two pound fish. That's a beautiful fish on that clam pro tackle, that blade spoon. What we've done is we set up here, fishing with different setups each. Chuck's fishing with an epoxy drop. Rick has a drop jig and I have the blade spoon. And it's clear that the blade spoon is out fishing the light, the light stuff.